Welcome to the Transitus of St. Francis. We gather tonight to celebrate the life and the passing into eternal life of St. Francis of Assisi. Our guide tonight will be this magnificent docile of St. Francis. It was painted around the year 1245 by Master San Francisco Bardi. The original is in Florence in the Bardi Chapel of Santa Croce. This is a hagiographic or historicated historiated icon, one that tells the story of the saint's life. The central panel consists of a picture of St. Francis and 20 very close, very carefully chosen scenes from his life. St. Francis is represented in the manner of a Byzantine icon, facing forward and surrounded by gold, symbolizing the radiance of heaven. The apron scenes which surround him tell the story of his life, ministry, and miracles. In the central image, Francis stands in a plain brown tunic of rough material. Around his waist is the cord with the three knots, symbolizing the vow of poverty, chastity, and obedience. In his left hand, Francis holds a book of the Gospels. His right hand is raised in the form of a blessing. On his hands and left foot, we see the markings of the stigmata. This central image shows St. Francis on Mount Laverna. Above him, seraphic angels appear in the sky. The rays of light radiating from the blue arc are above the angels to symbolize the divine transmission of the stigmata, which are the signs of Christ and the holiness of Francis. A hand holds a parchment with a Latin inscription. The inscription reads, listen to him who bears the dogma of life. Blue decorative bands with wineskin motif separate the central image of St. Francis and the scenes around him. Small busts of Franciscans in the shape of round gold medallions may be found where two or more of the decorative blue bands intersect. Much like witnesses, these early Franciscans silently observe the scenes from the life of Francis which surround them. St. France, St. Francis who praises God with a new song, pray for us. St. Francis, who announces and brings peace and good to all, pray for us. Miniature one, Francis is released from confinement by his mother. Francis grew up in a wealthy family raised by his father Pietro to become a successful and respected part of a growing commercial trade. His mother, Lady Pika, loved him very dearly. All this crashed down around them when Francis returned from war as a sick and broken man. In the depths of his depression and ill health, Francis heard the voice of God, leading him into a new way of life, carrying the shield of faith for the Lord. Changed in mind, he turned away from the ways of the world and found a new life of living for Christ. He began giving away his money and possessions to the poor, spending hours in prayer and fasting and falling in love with the lady poverty. People thought he had lost his mind. This behavior enraged Pietro who grabbed Francis and shamelessly dragged him home. With no pity, he shut Francis up for several days in a dark place. Driving to bend Francis's will to his own, he badgered him, beat, and bound him. When his father left home for a little while, 
on pressing business, pressing while on pressing family business, the man of God remained bound in the prison of his home. Okay, I got it. His mother, who had remained at home with him, did not approve of her husband's action and spoke with her son in gentle words. After she saw that he could not dissuade, she could not dissuade her son from his intention, she was moved by maternal instinct. She broke his chains and let him go free. Thanking Almighty God, he quickly returned to the place he had been before. He continued giving away his monies and possessions to the poor. St. Francis, whose mother is graced from above to give birth. Pray Thank for you. us. St. Francis, whose future holiness is foretold at birth. Thank pray you. for us. Miniature two, Francis renounces his father. When Francis's father saw that he could not recall Francis from the journey he had begun, he became obsessed with recovering the money Francis had spent on feeding the poor and repairing churches. He was livid. He sought to have the bishop of the diocese talk some sense into Francis and demand that he return the possessions given to him by the family. In the public square, they confronted Francis who renounced his father and his patrimony. Francis stood in front of the bishop. He neither delayed nor hesitated, but took off and threw down all his clothes and returned them to his father. He did not even keep his trousers on, and he was completely stripped bare before everyone. The bishop, observing his frame of mind and admiring his fervor and determination, got up and, gathering him in his own arms, covered him with the mantle he was wearing. The bishop clearly understood that this was prompted by God, and he knew and he knew that the action of the man of God, which he had personally observed, contained a mystery. After this, he became his helper. Cherishing and comforting him, he embraced him in the depths of charity. St. Francis, who in his nakedness is reborn to new life. Pray, Pray for me. us. St. Francis, who leads with joy and exultation. Pray, Pray for me. us. Miniature three, Francis takes the penitence habit. A reading from the Holy Gospel of Matthew. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey, nor two tunics, nor sandals, nor a staff, for the laborer deserves his food. Illustrated in the third scene is Francis taking the penitent's habit. When Francis heard that Christ's disciples should have few possessions and preach the kingdom of God in penance, he immediately exulted in the spirit of God, saying, this is what he wanted, sought and desired with all his heart. He then took off the shoes from his feet, put down the staff from his hands, was satisfied with one tunic and exchanged his leather belt for a cord. After this, he made a tunic showing the image of a cross, making it very rough so that in it he might crucify the flesh with its vices and sins, and very poor and plain, so as to never be coveted by the world.
St. Francis, who dresses in sackcloth and goes barefoot and shaved with a rope around his hips. Pray for us. St. Francis, whose desire for a life is satisfied, pray for us. Miniature four, Francis hears the call to live the gospel. For Francis, every word at mass filled him with love and poured over into his love for Jesus. Their souls became intertwined as he let the words of the gospel sink deeper and deeper into his soul. At times, the words and demands of Jesus seemed harsh, but still Francis fast in the love of Jesus, and like St. Paul, learned to rejoice in his sufferings because they brought him ever closer to his master. The more Francis renounced for the Lord, the more he seemed to possess. In that light, Francis saw his celibacy as virginity, which brought him closer and closer to his one true love, Jesus. This virginity, this love, poured out of him into a deep, ever-filling pool that flowed over into his love for any he encountered, both man and creature. Francis had truly learned to love. St. Francis, who asked God for straight faith, certain hope, and perfect charity, pray, pray for, for us. St. Francis, who asked God for wisdom and knowledge, pray, pray for us. <clears throat> Miniature five, Pope Innocent the Third approves the rule. Here, Francis is depicted kneeling at Pope Innocent the Third's feet, seeking an official sanction for his way of life in poverty and ecclesiastical protection for his brothers. The cardinals stand behind the Franciscans, looking on in astonishment at the tender scene here being enacted shamelessly in full view of the whole papal court. Francis saw in the Pope the tangible representative of Jesus, believing the papal word of approval would be Christ's own approval of his interpretation of the gospel. The Pope listened to Francis and later that night dreamed that the church of St. John Lateran, the mother church of Christendom, began to lean on its side and topple to the ground. When crashing to the ground, a little beggar leaped from the shadows and supported the falling building on his own shoulders. The Pope recognized the heroic figure as Francis and accepted the dream as a powerful vision. Innocent then resummoned an audience with Francis and his brothers, listening to Francis' interpretation of the dream. The Pope responded, by rising from his throne to embrace Francis and proclaiming for all to hear. Go with God, little brothers, and announce salvation for all, as the Lord reveals it to you. And when the Almighty has multiplied your number, then come back to me, and I will charge you with a greater inheritance. 
St. Francis, whose way of life is approved by Innocent the Third. Pray for us. St. Francis, who is inspired by the actions of the apostles. Pray for us. <clears throat> Miniature 6. Francis Preaches at Gratio. As Francis' theology grew and took shape, he found himself meditating on the birth of Christ. To him, the greatest event in the history of Christianity took place in the Incarnation, Christ coming to our world as a helpless baby. <clears throat> a child is dependent on us to take care of it. Francis reasoned, so we could approach that child without fear. We can treasure the Christ child as flesh of our flesh and bone of our bone. As Francis pondered this, he had the idea of recreating Christ's birth so that all could understand it on a deeper level. So Francis set about recreating the birth of God as a helpless child. He brought a donkey and other animals to the creche with which he and the brothers and villagers did their best to imitate the scene of God's birth. This profound practice spread to the surrounding villages, then to all of Italy and around the world to this day. St. Francis, who announces and brings peace to all, pray for us. St. Francis, who preaches with a simple and magnificent heart, pray for us. Miniature seven. Francis preaches to the birds. Illustrated in the seventh scene is the sermon to the birds. Here, while traveling through the Spoleto Valley, Francis saw a great multitude of birds of different types gathered and ran swiftly toward them. When very close, he saw that they awaited him and did not fly away as they usually would. Filled with great joy, he humbly requested that they listen to the word of God. Francis is seen standing close to his companions as he converses with the birds. Among many other things, he said to them, my brother birds, you should greatly praise your creator and love him always. He gave you feathers to wear, wings to fly, and whatever you need. God made you noble among his creatures and gave you a home in the purity of the air so that you neither sow or, or reap he nevertheless protects and governs you without your least care. It is said that at these words, the birds rejoiced in a wonderful way according to their nature, stretching their necks, spreading their wings, opening their beaks, and gazing at him. St. Francis, who preaches to the birds attentive in the branches, pray for us. St. Francis, whose heart pours out happy words, pray, pray for, for us. us. Miniature 8, Francis preaches to the Sultan. 
as the Crusades wore on, Francis had a burning desire to go to the Holy Land and die as a martyr for Christ's cause. But God had other plans. Francis did indeed go to the Holy Land to achieve his desire and to preach to the Muslims with hopes of converting them to Christianity. Francis and his brothers ministered to the Crusaders and brought as much comfort to them as they could. Then something occurred to Francis. What if he could go to the Sultan? In this way, he could possibly achieve his desire to be a martyr. But even better, he could end this war by leading the Sultan and his men to Christ. So Francis and his brother set off. With God's yeah. grace, they made it to the Muslim camp and were brought to see Sultan al -Kamim. Francis was surprised to find that the Sultan was actually a man with great spirituality. They spent several days talking about the grace of God, or Allah. In the end, Francis didn't convert al -Kamim, but instead was given a pass to go back through the camp safely. In a profound way, Francis had made a friend and had a new perspective on God's grace. St. Francis, who announces the gospel to the Sultan of Egypt, pray for us. St. Francis, who announces and brings peace and good to all, pray for us. Miniature 9, The Sheep Among the Goats. Chilano tells us that Francis overflowed with the spirit of charity. With any sheep and brute animals. But among the different kinds of creatures, lambs with a special fondness. One of the stories demonstrates love. Francis journeyed through the march of Ancon and preached the word of the Lord. He came upon a shepherd in the field, string of flock of little sheep walking humbly and grazing calmly among these many goats. When blessed Francis saw it, he stopped in his tracks and touched with sorrow in his heart, said to the brother accompanying him, do you see that sheep? I tell you, in the same way our Lord Jesus Christ, meek and humble, walked among the Pharisees and chief priests. So I ask you, my son, to share my compassion for this little sheep and lead this little one from the midst of these goats. They had nothing to pay for the sheep when suddenly a traveling merchant arrived and offered to pay for what they wanted. Taking up the sheep, they gave thanks to God, and after reaching this, they recounted the parable who was in the spirit of the man of God and gave thanks to God. Boys nearby who cared, using its wool to make a neck for St. Francis. St. Francis, who is meant to pray for us. St. Francis, who prays for the one lost sheep to be returned, pray for us. Miniature 10, The Ransom of the Lamb. Chilano continues with another legend of Francis's love for lambs. Again, Francis was walking with the same brother when he came across a man on his way to market. The man was carrying over his shoulders two little lambs bound and ready for sale. When blessed Francis heard the bleating lamb, his innermost heart was touched, and drawing near, 
He touched him as a mother does with a crying child, showing his compassion. Why are you torturing my brother lambs? He said to the man, binding them and hanging them this way. I am carrying them to market to sell them, since I need the money, he replied. The holy man asked, what will happen to them? Those who buy them will kill them and eat them, he responded. At that, the holy man said, no, this must not happen. Here, take my cloak as payment and give me the lambs. The man readily gave him the little lambs and took the cloak since it was much more valuable. The cloak was when the holy man had borrowed from a friend on the same day to keep out the cold. The holy man of God having taken the lambs, now was wondering what he should do with them. Taking advice from the brother who was with him, he gave them back to that man, ordering him never to sell them or allow any harm to come to them, but instead to preserve, nourish, and guide them carefully. St. Francis, who declares himself to be brother with all of creation, pray for us. St. Francis uses privilege for the good of all. Pray for us. Miniature 11, Francis does public penance. St. Francis is the central figure seated on a stool. He has eaten meat during Lent. Declaring himself to be a glutton, Francis demands that he be treated like a criminal in a gesture of penitence. Francis is naked from the waist up and is tied to the center pole by his wrists. A chain wraps around his neck and is connected to the top of the pole. His discarded cloak lies on the ground in front of him. In front of Francis, a group of men gather to watch him. The most prominent of the men gestures at him. Behind Francis, a group of ladies gather, either point or cover their faces. In whose humility, Francis suffers the humiliation in silence. St. Francis, who in his humility finds solace and penance, pray for us. St. Francis, who in prayer releases the flames of love, pray for us. Miniature 12, Francis receives the stigmata. Francis's heart was filled with the desire to imitate the bridegroom himself in any way possible. Once, while praying fervently in a cave at Mount Laverna, France, Francis was filled so much with this desire that he saw a seraph descend towards him. As he watched, a figure with six fiery, shining wings hovered above the cave where Francis sat. In the midst of this splendor was the figure of Jesus nailed to the cross. This filled Francis with such joy and sorrow that he begged Jesus for the privilege of becoming like his master. With that, Jesus, the most holy bridegroom, granted Francis's request. Francis, 
received the stigmata in his hands, feet, and side. St. Francis, to whom a winged seraph appears luminous, pray for us. St. Francis, who bears the marks of Christ in love, pray for pray us. Miniature 13, the apparition at the chapter of Arles. During a chapter meeting of the friars, one of the brothers, a father Maldonado, has a vision of St. Francis. Here, Father Maldonado stands to the far left of the brothers, while St. Anthony of Padua, who is not identified in the scene, is preaching. In the upper and middle of the miniature, a bust of St. Francis appears in a vision to Maldonado. In the vision, St. Francis faces forward and blesses the priest. The bust is of the same form as the gold medallion bust of Franciscans, which divide these scenes here. This is an example of a miracle worked by St. Francis while he was still alive. St. Francis, who guides his flock by preaching always. Pray for us. St. Francis, humble one whom the whole world follows. Pray for us. Miniature 14. Francis ministers to the lepers. Francis nursing the lepers is one of the earliest representations of his saintliness. He is shown ministering to the lepers in two different views. In the view on the left, a leper sits on the lap of St. Francis having a conversation. On the right, Francis stoops over a basin of water to wash the feet of a leper, while two others watch, awaiting their turns. The scene is reminiscent of Jesus washing the feet of the disciples at the Last Supper. St. Francis, whose kiss to the leper touches the face of Christ. Pray, Pray for us. St. Francis, humble one whom the whole world follows. Pray, Pray for, for us. Miniature 15, the death of Francis. Francis's health declined for several years, and he knew that Sister Death was waiting to take him on his journey to heaven, a journey for which he longed. Francis had many desires about how he wanted to die. He wanted to leave the world owing nothing and to die lying on the earth itself. He wanted to hear a specific reading from the Gospel of John. He wanted to taste one, once more his favorite almond cookies and asked Brother Jacoba to bring him some. All of these things his brothers arranged for him with great tenderness and love. Francis said farewell to his brothers saying, Live in the fear of God and remain with him forever. As for me, I am hastening to God, 
whose grace I entrust to all of you. He blessed not only those brothers who stood by him, but all who would follow them. One is holding a book, probably open to the gospel. Another is burning incense. Above him are two angels lifting the soul of Francis to heaven. And at the bottom of the scene are figures of people kneeling beside him, perhaps praying to the saint after his death. St. Francis, who is elected by God for the health of the world, pray for us. St. Francis, who brings joy where there is sadness, pray for us. Miniature 16. Francis heals the crippled and the possessed. For the canonization of Francis after his death, a great many miraculous healings were documented as the prior panel seems to foretell. This panel shows four of these stories, including the curing of a girl with a twisted neck and the driving out of demons from a possessed penitent. Cholano tells us, on the very day that he was buried, Francis scattered signs dazzling as lightning. He restored to her regular heights a young girl whose body had been bent and severely twisted. Thereafter, he poured out everywhere the grace of health on those afflicted with grave illness, but especially on those who came to his memorial shrine. Two Franciscan brothers stand at the tomb of Francis, perhaps watching the ascension of the soul of Francis on the day of his burial. St. Francis, who was elected by God for the health of the world, pray for us. St. Francis, who brings joy where there is sadness. Pray for Pray. Us. Miniature 17, the canonization of St. Francis. Less than two years after the death of Francis, on October 3rd, 1226, he was canonized as a saint. Here, Pope Gregory IX is seen blessing the assembled crowd of brothers who wear white surplices over their hooded garments. The foremost friar bows his head as he receives the Pope's blessing. He carries a book, which is probably a collection of the saints' miracles. Shalano's text indicates that the Pope praised Francis while seated on the throne and later went to kiss the saint's tomb. In the Bardi Dossal, these two actions seem to have been combined in the representation, where the Pope stands before an altar that appears to be over the tomb. Saint Francis, who is canonized in Assisi by Gregory the Ninth. Pray for us. Pray for us. St. Francis, whose sepulcher is on the hill of paradise. Pray for us. Pray for us. Miniature 18. The name of Francis is invoked by sailors in a storm. Illustrated in the 18th scene of the Bardi panel is a saving a ship in distress. Here, 10 mariners in the sea feared for their lives and cast anchor in the sea. As the sea rose higher, the ropes were broken and the mariners were left without an anchor wandering aimlessly over the waves. At last the sea calmed and they recovered their ropes and anchor, 
calling on St. Francis for support. They turned to the saint and in a moment, without any human help, they saw the anchors floating on the water as if the nature of iron had been changed into the lightness of wood. St. Francis, who changes despair into hope, pray for us. St. Francis, who turns darkness into light, pray for us. Miniature 19, the rescued sailors fulfill their vow. In this panel, the sailors who were saved from drowning in the terrible storm, still rejoicing at their miraculous protection by St. Francis, did what they had vowed to do. They had promised that if they were helped in recovering the anchors that had been lost in the storm, they would donate an ounce of gold to build a church in their town of Chieti. The second they agreed to do this, the anchors floated up from the depths of the sea, enabling the sailors to regain control of their damaged ship and return home. Here, the thankful mariners come to the tomb of St. Francis with their gift, each carrying a candle with a rope around their necks. St. Francis, who helps the sailors to see Christ in Brother Storm, pray for us. St. Francis, who preaches always, only using words when necessary, pray for us. Miniature 20, Healing of the Paralytic, Bartholomew of Narni. There are many stories of the miracles done by St. Francis after his death. Here we see one of them, the curing of an elderly man named Bartholomew, a poor man who one day awoke from his sleep under a walnut tree to find himself paralyzed. One leg became withered and useless. Over six years of pain and deformity, Bartholomew had a dream in which St. Francis came to him to tell him to go to the baths to be cured of this disability. Bartholomew was puzzled by this dream and went to the bishop to ask what he should do. The bishop, who believed that St. Francis had much compassion for those who suffered, blessed the old man and encouraged him to follow the instructions. As Bartholomew limped slowly on his journey to the baths, he lost his way in the darkness of the night. Again, he was directed by a voice that he was on the wrong road and needed to try another path. When Bartholomew found the bath and was able to enter it, he felt two invisible hands stretching out his leg and his foot. When finished, he immediately began thanking and praising God and St. Francis for the miraculous heal healing. St. Francis, whose spirit hovers in the Holy Spirit, pray for us. St. Francis, who conquers this world with love, pray for us. St. Francis of Assisi, spent over 20 years as a wandering mendicant preacher ministering to the marginalized of his time. His life was marked by an unrelenting commitment to radical poverty, by his intense love for the crucified Christ and for others, and by his deep spirit of prayer and contemplation. By his example of humility and poverty, he attracted many followers who embraced his vision of living the gospel life. In his own time, the companions of Francis numbered in the thousands. Today, Franciscans number in, mil in the millions across the globe. <clears throat> On his deathbed, Francis left a living legacy of evangelical life to us in these words. I have done what is mine to do, May Christ teach you yours. 
the legacy of Francis's charism unfolds anew for each generation of Franciscans, charging us to find what is ours to do in this time and place. In this spirit, we pray the blessing of St. Francis given to Brother Leo. May the Lord bless thee, may the Lord keep thee, may he show his face to thee and have mercy. The Lord bless thee, the Lord keep thee. May he turn to thee his countenance and give thee peace. The Lord bless thee. And with that, this final blessing from St. Francis, this concludes tonight's transitus. We would like to thank everyone for coming and celebrating the life of St. Francis with us. We would also like to take a quick moment to thank our planning team, which included members from the Franciscan Federation Region 6, the Franciscan School of Theology, the little portion Secular Franciscan Fraternity in Granite Bay, California. The Orders of Friars Minor, Santa Barbara Province. St. Francis of Assisi Parish in Sacramento, California. The Sisters of St. Francis of Philadelphia. The Sisters of St. Francis of Penance and Christian Charity, Sisters and Associates, St. Francis Province. And the St. Francis Emerging Secular Franciscan Fraternity in Sacramento, California. At this time, we invite those who are in attendance to tell us who you are and where you are from. You may do so by unmuting yourself in speaking or through the Zoom chat feature. Thank you again. Hello, I'm Mary Munden, uh, originally from Sacramento, uh, but I'm now in Lisbon, Portugal. You go. Mary Lou Blanco Yorosh, Los Angeles, California, subject of the Franciscans of the Sacred Heart. <clears throat> Lawrence Enomoto, Mother Marianne Cope Fraternity, Eva, Hawaii. Anna Mariam, a sister of St. Francis of Philadelphia. I'm Rebecca Goldberg, and I'm a member of the New Umbrian Fellowship in San Francisco of the Episcopal Franciscans. Hmm. Martha Rusnak, Associate Sacramento. God bless you all. Hi, I'm Teresa Walden from Spokane, Washington. I'm a St. Francis companion. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I'm uh, Sister Kathy Warren, a Rochester, Minnesota Franciscan living in San Diego, California. Oh. I'm Sister Jean Rollins, representative. And I'm Sister Susan Blomstad, and we comprise the Alleluia community in Arroyo Grande, California, Sisters of St. Francis of Penance and Christian Charity. Kathy Ann and Mary Mebbin were sitting here together in Santa Maria, California. We're Sisters of St. Francis of St. Francis Province. And now we're going to uh, exit. So have a good meeting. It was wonderful. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. Brother Philip, Third Order Society of St. Francis, New Jersey. Wow. God bless all of you. Pox et bonum.
Wonderful. Gracias. I'm Elaine Bryden of Tacoma, Washington. I'm a Franciscan companion. Ed and Noreen Ringline from Petaluma, California. We're with the Il Pavarello fraternity here in Petaluma. We're also the vice minister and secretary of the uh, San Saint uh, Unipro Sarah for regional fraternity. I'm Louise Gester from Spokane, Washington, and I'm a Franciscan companion. Hey, Louise. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Teresa. <laughs> We're the Poor Claire Sisters. Oh. Hey. <laughs> Are we muted? Yeah, we have to unmute. We're muted. Yeah, we're oh, okay. How come we're not coming in? I wonder if we don't have audio. We can, we can hear you. Say it, say it again, please. Okay. The okay. Yeah. <laughs> we're the Poor Claire Sisters in Spokane, Washington. And uh, we're glad to be with you all, too. Thank you. Thank you. Happy Feast Day. Thank you. Happy Feast Day to all of you. For the Sisters of St. Francis, Philadelphia, and Portland, Oregon, Sister Teresa, Mary Jo, and Celeste. Oh. Hi, Hi, Ken. <coughs> I'm Virginia Muller. Uh, from the uh, fraternity of St. Thomas More in Berkeley. Oh. <laughs> I'm Marianne LeCompte, and I'm from the uh, St. John the Baptist uh, fraternity in Fresno. Fresno. And we are Melva and Brian Simmons from the Junipero Serra of Carmel fraternity, and we are coming to you from Marina, California. <laughs> I am Susan Martinez. I'm living in Florida, but I am an associate of the Sisters of St. Francis of Penance and Christian Charity from the Sacred Heart Province in Denver. Oh, welcome. Uh, I'm Robert Smith. I'm in Bend, Oregon. I'm the local minister fraternity, and I want to take this time to personally thank Debbie. King Smith for all she did trying to get me on. Uh, I had uh, trials and tribulations, but thank you. She must have the patience of Job. She finally, <laughs> finally got me uh, turned around and pointed in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And I am so thankful to be with all my Franciscan sisters and brothers. Thanks be to God. Perfect joy, Robert. <laughs> right. Franciscan joy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jim and Sue Huss from uh, Spokane, Washington, St. Francis Fraternity, uh, where I'm vice minister and Sue is secretary. Yay. Hey, Spokane. <laughs> I am Sister Lilia Cagendo, Little Sisters of St. Francis of Assisi from Brooklyn working in the office of Franciscan Federation. Thank you so much and have a blessed feast day tomorrow. Thank you. I'm Rose, can you hear me? Yep. Mm -hmm. Rose from Sacramento, California. And I wanna just say a quick hello to all my brothers and sisters from San Francisco, I mean from Sacramento and hello Ken. Thank you. Peace and all good. I'm Dorothy McCormick, presently in San Sacramento, Sister St. Francis of Venice and Christian Charity. And with me is Camille Martinez. Hi. Hi. Hello. Okay, bye, all of you. This is the uh... Uh, Franciscan Friars uh, Fraternity of Laudato Si Sea and St. Francis Retreat in San Juan Bautista. I'm Brother Keith. Oh. Brother Paul. Hi. Oh. Brother James. Hello. 
Hello. I'm Michelle Delorier, and I'm a, a co-journer with the Rochester Franciscans, living now in Pueblo, Colorado. Hello. Co-journer. I have no idea what that is. What is the follower? What are those other companions? You're not muted. This is Lorraine Valencia. I'm with the Fresno St. John the Baptist uh, fraternity in Fresno, California. <clears throat> My name is Carol Ramsey and I'm an associate with the Sisters of St. Francis in St. Francis, St. Francis Province. And I'm also from St. Joachim's Parish in Madeira for you folks in Fresno. Hi, we're neighbors. <laughs> and I've been playing cat mom too, so I... <laughs> I had kitty getting in, in my lap. I didn't want to be a distraction. So, mm -hmm. I'm Elaine Abde, an associate here in Sacramento. Thank you all for attending. Hi, Elaine. Hi, Elaine. Hi. Hello. I'm. Uh, oh, I see that there's somebody else on. Hello. You're good. Go ahead. Yeah. Hello, I'm uh, Donna Hargrave Kane, and I'm here with my husband Michael. I am a, a companion with the Sisters of St. Francis of Philadelphia in Tacoma, Washington. Hey. Hi, Donna. Hi, Donna. Hi, Donna. Hello. Hey, Donna. I'm Jan Kading. I'm in Michigan, and I'm the Minister of Divine Providence Fraternity, Divine Mercy Region. Um, thank you for doing this. Hi, Jan. Hi. Hi, I'm Kathy Wood from Sacramento. I'm a Franciscan of Redwood City, Penance and Charity, and I have the honor to live with this very patient woman, Debbie Clinging Smith. I know the other side of that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Adrienne Schultz, and I'm at St. Francis of Assisi Parish in Sacramento, California, and a, and a pre-associate. Glad to see this large, large group. Hi, Adrienne. Hi, I'm Sharon Muster. As an associate in Sacramento, California. Hey, Hi, Sharon. Hi, Sharon. Hi, Sharon. Hi, Sharon. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Hi, Janet. I'm uh, Sister, Sister Janet Corcoran, a Franciscan from Redwood City. And I want to thank Debbie and all who worked with her on such an inspirational program. Thank you. Good. I'm Sister Carol Woods. I'm the Franciscan Missionary Sister of Assisi. I'm with Sister Cordelia from Brooklyn, New York. I work with Sister Lelia in the Franciscan Federation office in Brooklyn. All right. What a great evening. All right. Nice to be part of it. Thank you. Hello. And I'm Sister Pat. I'm a sister of St. Francis of Philadelphia in Spokane, Washington. And I want to just personally thank Debbie for inviting me to be part of the planning committee. It has been a great experience, worth, worth every hour we put into preparing this. So I thank the right. rest of the readers and those who helped with the writing. And another hand right. out of special thanks to Kathleen Moffat for being patient with us when we were asking her for additional help. It's been yes. so good to see all of you tonight, members from my community in Philadelphia, in Tacoma, in Portland, in Spokane. It's been great. Thank you Hi, all. Sister Pat. Thank you, Teresa. Hi, sister. Thank you. Thank you. Happy feast day. Happy feast day, everyone. Many blessings. I think we're ready for... I'm Laura Moyes, Immaculate Conception, Bronx, New York. 
Oh, Bronx. Bronx. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. 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 I'm Carol Asher, and I'm with St. Joseph Fraternity in Baton Rouge, um, the St. Joan of Arc region, mm. and I'm a secular Franciscan, and I made Brother Jacoba's cookies. So oh, I wish oh. I could celebrate with you, but uh, every year we celebrate the transitus and um, we always make these cookies. Someone always passes out the recipe. And I'm just thankful that you all had this online. It's been a blessing. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jean Iceno from St. Francis of Assisi Parish in Sacramento, California. It's so nice to, to see everyone after being isolated for so long. Hi, Jean. Hi. I'm Liz Kerr, and I'm a Franciscan uh, and it's in Christian charity in Denver, Colorado. It's wonderful being with you and uh, sharing with all of, all of uh, the Franciscan family. Thank you. My name is Teresa Arseniega, and I'm a parishioner at St. Francis of Assisi in Sacramento. And it is such a great joy to be here. Thank you. We're Dennis and Diane Mahoney from Sacramento, California. We are parish longtime parishioners at St. Francis of Assisi Parish also. And I just wanna thank Debbie for her vision of bringing this together. She's pulled it off twice, folks, both for St. Clair and now for our patron, St. Francis. So thank you, Debbie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie, very much. Thank you, everyone, for putting this together. You did a wonderful, wonderful job. God bless. <laughs> thank you. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Happy feast day, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you so much. It was beautiful. Yeah, it was. It was. It was Thank you. you. Thank you. Everybody. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Blessing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Where are you going? Mike, what? Hi. Bye. 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 <laughs> Thanks, Debbie. <laughs> Our pleasure. Yeah. Thank you, Debbie. Great job. Thanks, Adrian. Thank Bye. you, Debbie, and thank you to all the readers. It was wonderful. Yeah, thanks to all the readers, too. They were wonderful. I just want to say something that uh, all of the chat comments that are over on the right of my screen here, if I'm not doing full screen, I had did a control copy. So now I have captured all of the comments our sisters and brothers have shared. And I'm going to share them with my fraternity, which I think uh, is kind of a cool thing. Yeah. You just do a control, uh, whatever it is, control C or copy, and uh, run your uh, cursor up and down. You get the whole list oh. of chat. We, yeah, we can. That way I can share with them. We can get a uh, an audit copy. So we can share that too if you want. And we're going to share cool. a recording of tonight. And as well as the the narrative that everybody read, and if somebody wants the PowerPoint, they're welcome to it. Thank you. I'd like the PowerPoints. We'll stick it somewhere where you can download it. Thank you. You and I are almost pen pals, uh, Debbie. So uh, I, I really appreciate <laughs> We're all Zoom pals, Robert. We're Zoom pals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, God bless you for all you did, and I want to thank everybody. And uh, happy feast day. Now I'm going to go eat supper. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Yeah, take care. Bye. Nothing. Bye. Is Brother Ken Bye, back guys. there? Good to see you, Father Ken. Yeah. With the French. Very good to see you. Very good to see everybody. <laughs> Thank you, Sister Carol. Bye. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye. Good to see Bye. you, Cap Sister Kathy Woods. Haven't seen you in a while. Good to see you, Sister Kathy. He's Amen. Hiding. Bless you all. See everybody at the queue. Ciao. <laughs> Ciao. Okay. Hi, Hazel. Are we ready to um, bid everybody good evening? Anybody yeah. else want to shout out? Thanks again, Debbie. For so thank, long for thank you, Debbie. You it, it Debbie. Well. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you, Debbie. Diane, Debbie. Needs to wave yeah. us out. All right. Bye bye. Thank bye, you. everybody. Thank you bye. for coming. Bye. 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 Good night, everybody, and thank you for coming. Good night, family. Bye bye. Good night, night John Boy. So this guy right here, Sleepy Man. Thank you, Debbie. <laughs> thank Good you, night. Everyone. Sleep tight. <laughs> I'm going to end the meeting with those that are left. Take okay. care, all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.